you just gotta figure like if the people around you aren't taking similar actions or similarly motivated to you they're going to be constantly you're going to have to put in extra effort to continue to succeed and i guess i'm really lazy so i'm trying to find the easiest way to succeed and the easiest way for me to succeed is to surround myself with other successful people or aspiring successful people so like it's not to say that you only have to hang around with rich people or people who have already made it as long as they're putting in the effort right as long as yeah. they're putting in the reps the work they're doing the research that what is up you guys matt mckeever here with mike rosehart and so we're going to do another episode of mike and matt on fire but before we even jump into that i thought there's a bunch of different things going on so let's let's just address some of that first so first of all congrats on a thousand subs Thank you. So Thank do you, you want to kind of just tell the audience what was going on and stuff? And yeah. Um, so I've been, I created a YouTube channel. Finally. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing videos for over a year now. Yeah. I would think if you go back, like probably the last one we did was we're, we're just really starting to get you to commit to doing something. So that's right. So I think, uh, you know, starting about a year ago, Matt's been poking me for a while and you're one mm -hmm. of the main people that's pushed me yeah. onto YouTube. And so I created a YouTube channel and I uh, started producing content and videos on real estate and financial mm -hmm literacy and financial education so it's been fun documenting my journey and sharing yeah. you know kind of thoughts on different and, topics. and so like what kind of caused you recently your channel really popped so do you want to talk about that a bit yeah so um thank you to graham Stephan for doing a video with me uh we did a, a pretty cool video on sort of my backstory and uh, yeah it, it did fairly well we got twenty thousand views in the first day or two and yeah. so that gave that helped boost me from 335 four subs to over a thousand and so that was mm -hmm. like, I'm really appreciative of all the new subscribers yeah. I've got and my channel's now growing and people are really enjoying the content. So yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I know most of you guys already know who Graham Stephan is. That's how a lot of you guys know me, but I just thought it'd be kind of cool. Uh, it's just awesome to see that Graham effect uh, spreading more awesomeness in the financial independence community. So. It's called the Graham effect now. Yeah. If you go on and it's happened twice. So it, that's a pattern. It's no <laughs> longer. Right. And I would say it even happened with me, Kevin, too. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, anyways, today's episode of Mike and Matt on Fire, we're going to be talking about uh, elephants in the room. What we're going to be doing is talking about an article that Wait But Why did, which you didn't even know who Wait But Why was. Yeah, I So, he's got some homework, and you guys, if you've never checked out Wait But Why, you got some homework now, too. I'll link to it in the video description down below, but there's an amazing TED Talk he did, and the TED Talk was on the procrastination monkey, and... Uh, you started seeing some of like the humor in his stuff, right? Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's fantastic. And it talks about how essentially all of us uh, think about your brain kind of as a ship. And most of us have just like an erratic monkey driving it. And that's the procrastination monkey. And uh, the procrastination monkey never does what's in our best interest. So anyways, you guys definitely need to check that out. But in this episode, we're going to be talking about taming the mammoth. Why you should stop caring about what other people think. And so this is really timely for Mike, just because with the recent blow up of his YouTube channel, you get tons of feedback. And so some of it can be super positive and some of it can be less than super positive. So yeah. we thought, let's kind of dive into this. So I'll, I'll throw up a link here. This is a super long article, but honestly, it's so worth reading. But the high level gist of it is the first section is really just talking about you know, how we all kind of have this inner voice that's constantly telling us, you're not good enough, you're not special, don't take that risk. And honestly, you know, he dives into it in this article, but a lot of that preconditioned kind of into us an instinct from, you know, not years ago, but like tens or hundreds of thousands of years ago. And so the, the adaptations we maybe developed back then aren't necessarily the best for survival in the modern world. But so let's just kind of dive into it. We don't need to go like uh, step by step through this, but let's just kind of talk about, you know, like what your experience has been so far. And I'll maybe just kind of share some of mine too. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they talk about the, this like mammoth effectively that's on your shoulder. Right. And it's sort of this, this mammoth that's developed from 50,000 or hundred thousand years ago. Right? Yeah. That, you know, back then 50 or hundred thousand years ago, you need to be part of a tribe, right. And you need mm -hmm. to have that, um, social protection. So part of that, you know, everything you did need to have that social proof and that social acceptance, right? And I think that, you know, today the world's very different than it was back then. If you're yeah. not part of this one tribe where like their opinion, opinions and thoughts like dictate your survival, right? Like back literally 80,000 years ago, right? If you, if they didn't like you or whatever, then they yeah. decided if you, you got ostracized tribe, by the tribe, you exactly. were done for. You were done. So today that's not the case. There are probably millions of tribes on the earth today that you know we're all parts of different tribes mm -hmm. and we build our own tribes and 
at the end of the day, it was really key to me because you know I've been going through a lot of that right recently. With you get a lot of when you put yourself out there, you know you're you're gonna get you're your vulnerable a little bit bit sometimes, right? But there's there's so many positives and so many negatives, and I've experienced some of the some of the negatives as well. Often, um, you know, there'll be some folks out there who have a bit of I don't know, they maybe just don't wish you well, and and maybe maybe it's jealousy. Haters gonna hate. Haters are gonna hate, right? And and it's the worst when it comes from sometimes when it comes from people close to you, but yeah. it's also really nice when um, you're getting all that feedback from people who are close to you as well too. So you get the positive mm-hmm. and the negative, and it's great. I I've had a lot of people reach out to me, friends that I haven't talked to in years, right? I'll now that I've got YouTube videos out there, um, they're saying, "Oh, Mike, I haven't seen yeah. you in like eight years or ten years since high school. How have you been doing, man?" Like mm-hmm. that sort of thing has been really positive and really awesome. And you know, putting yourself out there, you are very vulnerable. People yeah. are going to judge you. And that's just the nature of like human behavior, I think. And we can't let that, I think a lot of the article talks about going into, you know, listen to your authentic voice as well as the, mm-hmm. you know, this, this man up on your shoulder, you have an authentic voice and that's sort of who you are. And, you know, when you, when you build your tribe at the end of the day, you need to ensure that you have the right people in that tribe and the right, um, yeah. you know, you, you discount certain opinions, right? And so if someone says something about you, like, you know, it's, it might be irrational. It might be coming from their mammoth, right? Their, yes. their fears. And that's anxieties. the biggest thing, first of all, to realize that everyone has these same self-doubts. Every yeah. single person does. But kind of building off of what you're saying, Mike, is this idea that, you know, 80,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, we were we were confined to a, a single tribe, like you said. But, like, that tribe was dictated by our relatives and our geographic location. Yeah. So it was hyper-localized. Where these days, we're not forced to that whatsoever. And so I think the key is... You know, you don't have to like or hang out with the people you grew up with. You don't have to like or hang out with the people that you necessarily are related to by blood. I think the key is we need to actually focus on who's a good influence in our lives and give those people more opportunities to be part of our life and who's a bad influence and maybe negate or reduce the amount of impact they have on our lives. And the weirder part, like this is going to be kind of talking even like a little bit higher level than what this goes into. but the key is, you know, the people that were right for you 10 years ago as friends, they're not inherently the right people for today. Like myself personally, I've drastically changed throughout the course of my life. I intend to continually continue to drastically change. So who knows what's going to be around the corner? Like the people I surround myself with today are people that are really helping bring me up. Maybe they won't be the right people to bring me up to the next plateau or the next level five years from now. I don't know. But I think the key is, a lot of us probably have at least some negative family members or some negative friends we've grown up with and known forever. And who knows why they have this negativity. Maybe it's based on, you know, their own insecurities. Maybe it's just based on a misunderstanding. Maybe they have your best intentions at heart and just don't understand your perspective. But at the end of the day, if they're not helping you, if they're, if they're actually just a negative impact, you, you should cut that shit out. We like you just don't let cancer keep running amok in your life. I don't see why you would let a mental cancer, like someone that's constantly a drain on you, someone that's constantly a negative impact or influence on you, why you would give them the time of day essentially. And so, sorry, can you mind if I keep my monologue going? Yeah, keep going. So, like, the one other thing I really want to talk about is recently we did OREC, and so that was the Ontario Real Estate Conference. It was fantastic, it was amazing, tons of positive feedback, and uh, one of the funny things, I know that a lot of people maybe at first won't think that this makes sense or will think that this is cocky, but a lot of people are like, oh, so are you going to do surveys and ask everyone about their opinion? And I understand why people think I should care about everyone's opinion about OREC, but I'll, I'll let you in on a secret, I don't. There's a handful of people whose opinions matter more. Like, I don't know, to me, honestly, and this is going to seem a little bit, and this this is maybe a little bit too extreme, but like, a democracy is an average and like I want OREC to be exceptional and so I need to only have the exceptional influences on OREC if I want it to be exceptional and continue to increase in its exceptionalism and like the same thing like it would be really hard for me to continue improving as a person if I hung around with five average Canadians no offense to Canadians it, it would just be more difficult right like I'm very careful about who I let into my life and influence me and now that's not saying that you got to drop every loser in your life or every person that's a bad influence but 
maybe you need to have a more serious conversation with them and explain to them that you're hyper focused on improving your life and if they're focused on dwelling that they're welcome to dwell just don't dwell in my presence i don't know yeah that was great do you have any specific examples you could share like remember what you you know it's been a while since you've blown up on youtube you've been a, yeah. a local celebrity on youtube yeah. for a while in london but so like negative impacts from youtube or just like in general examples of how i reduce people's influence whichever or, you prefer to yeah so on. Uh, I honestly haven't had a lot of negative feedback on YouTube and like the handful of situations where I did, it was honestly, it was people that didn't understand the medium whatsoever. So, you know, like people that were just like, you should be careful. And it was like, that's a very generic thing to say to me. Um, could you be more specific? And they never would like, the key is a lot of people are more than happy to share their opinions with you and whatever, but like that opinion unless it's validated by some sort of empirical evidence some sort of facts like it's just words right like it's literally just a concoction someone's thrown together that's not based off of anything so honestly there was never any youtube feedback that was necessarily negative for me but there's definitely people that are like oh man you've changed like we used to just drink all the time and hang out and it's like yeah and i don't i'm not even judging my past self or that past version of myself but like that's not the trajectory I want to go now. It, it was fun back then, it was cool, it was awesome, no judgment to people that want to do that all the time. But if it's no longer a priority in my life to get drunk every weekend, it, it doesn't make sense for me to hang out with people to get drunk every weekend, you know? Like yeah. it's just this changing in priorities of mine. And again, it's not I think a lot of people naturally want to jump to that that's a value judgment. But if if you make this about being a value judgment, you're never going to get permission to change from other people. Like all of us are waiting around for someone to tell you to go start a YouTube channel, but it's actually really rare that in real life someone will push you forward. Like, and this is going to sound like I'm patting myself on the back, but like it's exceptional people that will actually support and push you forward. Right. And so like, you know, guys like Graham Stephan have been really supportive of all of us in like the London, Ontario real estate rat pack where he's been really helping push us. And like, he takes his social media very seriously. Yeah. And so like, he doesn't want bad social media influences on him essentially, right? So like, he doesn't want to do a shitty quick little video with you. He wants it to be perfect. He wants the angles. He wants, he'll do multiple takes. And that to me is a good influence on me, right? Like versus the guy that's like, oh man, you're doing another social media post? Like, come on. Right. And it's like, well, okay, cool. Like you don't like social media, that's fine. First of all, you're wrong, it's the future. But beyond that fact, I mean, Okay, but like, I'm all about it. So we have a conflict here, you know, yeah. either we're gonna have to find somewhere else on the Venn diagram where we overlap, and we can focus our relationship on that aspect of the Venn diagram, or we can just kind of let the relationship dissolve. And I think the other thing I kind of want to talk about is nostalgia, and people get so nostalgic and like, yeah, nostalgia is kind of dangerous, I think, because like, it can be a great excuse to never change, right? Like, oh, remember when, like, and it's like, yeah, but no, like, I, like, that's cool, whatever happened in the past, but I'm more focused on the future, right? Like, yeah, I just don't, don't let people guilt you into not changing. And I feel like that happens a lot. And like, it, it happens when you try and do social media, it happens when you try and start real estate, it happens when you start talking about financial independence, it happens when you start trying a new diet or a new whatever, right? Or going out and networking, like, everyone, like, we just inherently, and I think this, uh, I'm going grounded back to the mammoth thing. Like we all have these instincts that are based off of past experiences, right? Like being ostracized from the group once could mean life or death a hundred thousand years ago. Being ostracized by a single group now is just part of your feedback loop. Like it, it's not, it's not inherently dangerous to you. Nothing has ever killed me up until this point. So that means I should be able to handle anything I've at least experienced up until this point. So like that sort of idea that like, I'm going to be fine. It's going to be fine, you know, and if I'm doing the right thing, if I have good intentions, it's going to work out. And so everyone that's a negative Nancy or like a judgmental Susie, like Jeff usually calls it, you know, like fuck Susie that you went to high school with if she's judging you. Like what, what she, she's going to be, you know, like just another best case scenario. She's going to be another average consumer. She's not producing shit. And like for me, a big thing was. You know, when you're getting started in the journey on anything, financial independence, if you're just trying to, to work towards retiring early, and you tell your colleagues about that, or you tell your family, you're going to get the same sort of resistance. Because it's mm -hmm. like, 
I think of it as like a stream, like before you're just swimming along with everyone else, and all of a sudden you see a different way, a different path. You're like, you know what, I'm gonna walk against the stream now, I'm gonna swim against the stream. And everyone's going by who doesn't see that point of view is like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? And on the way by, they might nudge you, right? Or whatever. Yeah. You're like, it just feels like when you first start anything with social media, it's the same way. And that being said, like I've had a lot of really great support too. Like 90% of, of the feedback is really, mm -hmm. really positive. People are like, man, you're doing a great job. Like keep at it. I really appreciate your videos and your content and you sharing your life with everyone and exposing yourself and being vulnerable for us to, to kind of see. But then there's always that, like there is that 10%, like you said, that or even that 1% probably yeah. in real life. It's more like 1%. They're just, you know, maybe they're they're jealous or they have their own self-interest at heart. Well, or, and a lot of people, I think, see you changing and take that as a value judgment as them. All of a sudden, you're all excited about social media and they're like, I don't do social media. And you're telling me it's awesome, but I don't do it. So now you're telling me I'm not awesome. It's like, eh, it's not about you, man. It's about yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, and exactly like you said, you got you to gotta find that common interest and that common ground. And if, you know, it's, it's already hard enough to go against the stream. Mm -hmm. What do you need those people like? Imagine that guy going by and just grabs your hand and tries to pull you with him yeah. on like the wrong way, right? And if you're trying to go against the stream, it's already hard enough. You don't have those people like hanging on to you almost like dead weight. And mm -hmm. so I, I like some of the advice there. Was that the advice then? Maybe cutting some of that dead yeah, weight away? Yeah, like, and like, so Gary Vee's talked about on his channel and like he even did a challenge where he said, cut one loser friend out of your life. And like, yeah, like go do it. I, you're, you're probably looking for permission from someone and no one's going to give it to you, but we give you permission to do it. And like, I've honestly, there's like, if we want some more real talk, some more honesty, like there's significant portions of my family that I've slowly reduced the amount of exposure I get to them simply because it, it wasn't productive in any way. And so why would I, and not like productive as in they weren't making me money, but productive as in I wasn't growing as a person, I wasn't enjoying the experience and I wasn't, you know, learning anything. They weren't taking anything away. It was just conflict oriented. What was the value in doing that? And then in other aspects where there was family members where it was important for me to try and maintain that relationship, I tried to focus on different aspects of the Venn diagram or try to pull them a little bit in my direction, right? So uh, recently I've been having my sister do a bunch of work for me on different little projects. And so that was a way to try and align both of our interests. You know, she, she maybe needed a little bit more income or a little bit financial stability and I needed a hand. And so like this was a way for us to spend more time together as well as get you know, as well for me to try and expose her a little bit more to my thought process and my ecosystem. And I think, personally, I think, or I hope it's had a good influence. And so, you know, I don't want people thinking like they have to go and like cut off all their family or cut off all their growing friends, because you don't. Because lots of them are gonna be happy for you and they're gonna support you. And lots maybe will even watch from afar and six months later, they're gonna start to come around, right? And so the thing is like, you know, Mike, you honestly haven't even experienced the best part yet of social media. And the best part is like now I'm start. I don't know why all of a sudden it started happening, but maybe it's because like OREC or I don't know. But in the last like month, I've been getting like more than, it wouldn't be every day, but probably every other day someone's commenting or sending me a DM saying like, I finally just closed on my first property. And I don't think I would have had the guts to do it without you. And it's like, that is super cool. And yeah. there's a couple people that I'm trying to coordinate with right now where I'm actually might be coming out and documenting them buying their first property and they at least partially credit me with helping them have the guts or the uh, fortitude to do it. So that's extremely gratifying. I really appreciate those of you that reached out and those of you that are, are doing it but haven't reached out, feel free to give me that ego stroke because I'm more than happy to take it. But uh, yeah, so honestly like, the best part still around the corner. And that's why like you just need to commit to it, right? Like you don't get rich off of buying your first rental property. No. Like you don't, right? Like no one no one retired off of like their very first deal. And so it's you're building iteration after iteration. And I think for myself, I've talked about it on a lot of my live streams, but not necessarily on any of my YouTube videos about the idea. I think there's so much value in constantly trying to increase the frequency of iterations, right? And so that means you're going to be going through constant change in life and that's going to create constant friction. And so that's going to create some friction in your network or tribe and like iron sharpens iron. So if they're good people, you know, they're going to be with you or they're going to be challenging you with facts. Cause at the same time, like we're not telling you to go out there and get an echo chamber of people that are just like, you're fantastic. Go, go, go. Everyone gets a participation trophy. Cause that's not what we're about either. 
But, you know, if, if they're literally just being negative for the sake of being negative, fuck them, fuck that, in my opinion. Yeah, a little bit of diversity of thought, devil's advocate out there is good. You yeah. Them to challenge your ideas in a positive, constructive way. Mm. That's cool. If you're giving constructive and positive feedback, yeah. sometimes the feedback is positive and, con and constructive, right? They're thinking, you know, that it makes sense to... Jesus. I'm sorry. I, I have no idea. I don't remember either. Oh, like, uh, you know, having having that diversity of thought is important. Oh, yes. In your tribe. So you may want to, you know, just because someone's giving you some constructive feedback that might feel, yeah. you know, it might feel like they're, they're being negative, but maybe they have your best intentions at heart and... You know, yeah, and, and if you don't know the difference or if you're having a hard time trying to determine whether someone's giving you, you know, just negative feedback or they're trying to constructively help you, take a day. Take a day. Don't react immediately to their advice and don't react and be like, you know what, Matt told me, fuck you, you're out of my life. Like, I don't want you doing that, <laughs> guys, so please don't do that. But what I want you to do is, like, sleep on it. And the next day, when you're no longer emotional, write down the arguments they presented you. And did they bring up any facts? Do they have any validity at all? You know, and if they don't, then you probably need to approach the person. If you want the person to continue being in your life, you should approach them and say, hey, you know what? I was thinking about what you said. I'm not like, I understand that you think it's risky, but I don't think that you've presented lots of rational, logical arguments towards my position. Can you maybe elaborate on that? And they're just like, you're crazy. Well, you're probably not a good person in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, watch all the comments and the be like, yeah, I had this friend who's always like down on me. I, I cut ties. Like, thank you. Thank you, Matt Mike. Um. And the thing is, if, if you are, say, in a circle of people that you really think there's a bunch of negative influences on you, that, that could be the case. And so, like, we also don't want you to become a hermit. So go out there and network with other people and meet yeah. other people. Expose yourself to other people. And if everyone you meet is telling you you're crazy, then like maybe you should go get help but otherwise i think you're going to find that your tribe will support you right so maybe you're just not in the right tribe and your network is your net worth right say, 100%. right so if your network is very you know limited then you may limit yourself say, right like if you're literally hanging out with people that all they do all day is get drunk or stoned and play video games like it's going to be extremely hard for you to become financially successful like yeah. it just will be uh you might be able to build up a great tolerance towards alcohol and weed and maybe be able to beat that game, you know, uh, but you're, you just got to figure like if the people around you aren't taking similar actions or similarly motivated to you, they're going to be constantly, you're going to have to put in extra effort to continue to succeed. And I guess I'm really lazy. So I'm trying to find the easiest way to succeed. And the easiest way for me to succeed is to surround myself with other successful people or aspiring successful people. So like, it's not to say that you only have to hang around with rich people or people who have already made it. As long as they're putting in the effort, right? As long as yeah. they're putting in the reps, the work, they're doing the research, that's all that. And you'll be motivated by the people around you. And right? No, it's more like, you see someone else go out and crush a deal and you're like, you know what? Like all I did last week was crush zero deals. Let's go crush a deal, you know, like. Yeah, you want to, you, you know, you just want to up it. Like I yeah. noticed that effect. I don't know what you call that, but like maybe the tribe effect or something. Mm -hmm. Where I, It's like, thing. it's healthy competition. It's yeah. almost a form of play. And it's productive. It's almost like a game in a lot of ways, yeah. and like even even social media in a lot of ways could be very like a, a game, and that it's gratifying. Oh yes, absolutely. You put out like a, it's like a, taking a quest in a video game. Yeah. You complete the quest, and it's like you get that positive feedback, and there's an endorphin rush, and mm -hmm. that's sort of the feedback loop. And those people who are thinking about, you know, maybe they've never been on Instagram before, and they're watching this YouTube video, or they don't have a Facebook account, and they are thinking about, I don't know why you mm -hmm. don't have an Instagram account. <laughs> I didn't like up till a few yeah. months ago. So I got on the bandwagon, but for those people who were like me, you know, a year ago, and I think I had one, but I had no followers and I never posted. <laughs> but if you're like, and you're, and you're there, you know, you're worried about some of the, the negatives, right? Some of the, the fears of putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. I think that the article we're talking about today talks specifically about, you know, it's going to be hard at first, right? And mm -hmm. that was part of the point he made, I think, was that, you know, whenever you do anything, it's going to be difficult at first until you've, you know, yeah. trained patterns and it, there's a lot of delayed gratification with anything like starting a business or financial independence, real estate, social media included, mm -hmm. the points you're making, right? It, it takes time to plant those seeds for them it to bear fruit. And yeah. eventually right now, maybe in the beginning, all you're seeing is some of the negatives, but mm -hmm. if you stick with it and stick with say financial independence, there's a period of of grinding where it's just going to be yeah. hard and like I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you guys like both I think Matt will agree that you know it, there's going to be a period where it's tough and you need to rely on your network and you need to really keep, mm -hmm. keep at it and keep grinding but the fruit at the end is worth 
the labors to get there. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, so I think we probably rambled on long enough. <laughs> Definitely I rambled on long enough about this subject matter, but we'd love to get your guys' opinion. So jump in the comment section down below and share with us. Have, have you started be focusing on your network and your tribe and the impacts they have on you? Have you noticed bad influences? Have you ever tried to reduce the negative influences on your life? We'd love to know. We'd love to get your opinion. And if you've succeeded, give us all tips because none of us are perfect and we can all constantly improve. So That's right. All right. Well, I think that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Jump over, sub to Mike if you haven't already. Uh, he had a thousand, but he'd love to hit two, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to hit 10,000 in the near future. And until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it. But if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point, guys? Thanks. So do you want to switch it up and shoot one for your channel now? Sure.